Hello, good morning, or sorry, good morning for me, good afternoon for you. I am uh, California time, so for us it's 7.40 a.m. Um, welcome everyone to the presentation. Uh, again, my name is Gabby Guzman. Um, I do work here at Cal State Fullerton. I have been the director of CETA for a little over a year. Uh, CETA is a uh, Center for Equitable Digital Access. So I'm going to be discussing CETA and how we implemented it and uh, showcase just a little about how it serves uh, Hispanic students, um, but also just all of our students here on campus. So I will go ahead and get started with a couple of demographic information on Cal State Fullerton. Uh, Cal State Fullerton is part of the 23 CSU campuses. We have over 40,000 students, which makes us the largest uh, CSU campus in the system. Uh, we offer 110 degree programs, 55% are, or sorry, 55 are undergrad, 55 are grad, and then we also offer a doctorate in education and nursing. Uh, many of our programs have achieved national prominence. Um, you will see that we are a, a Hispanic serving institution. We were designated an HSI in 2014 by the U.S. Department of Education. 52.7% uh, of our student population is underrepresented. That includes Native American, Black, Hispanic, and Pacific Islanders. 32% are first generation to attend, and 50.2% are Hispanic students. Okay, so um, COVID hit March 2020 for, for the United States, um, and we all like rapidly switched over to virtual instruction. Um, some students did thrive in the in the virtual instructions, but also some were hindered. Um, my son does attend here, and I know he just really struggled with the online instructions, while others, you know, they were fine with it. But what the uh, the pandemic kind of made us realize, even though it was already on the forefront, is that there is a large uh, disparity when it comes to uh, technology and resources that students have available to them. So as you know, we did go virtual, so everything kind of switched over to Zoom or however everyone was doing virtual instructions. We did Zoom. Uh, you can see that we, in 2021, leading into 2022, we had 1,065,980 Zoom meetings. Um, we had 6 million participants and just over 7 million hours in meetings. So obviously in order to attend a Zoom meeting, you need some sort of um, technology. So we did offer technology to students, um, but we felt that we needed more. We know that we have a commitment to access to the students and we wanted to level the playing field for our students in order for them to have a transformative educational experience and eliminate that opportunity gap. So we rose to the challenge. Um, and then we did recognize, you know, we did switch everyone virtually and not, again, not everyone has access to be fully engaged in the classroom. So at Cal State Fullerton, we do offer a 24 seven student help desk. We have, they can chat with us, they can call, they can come in person. Um, we have laptop programs for first generation and low income students. We have laptop loaner programs. We also offer software to all the students. Um, we have a high speed network, we had Wi-Fi. We had everything here on campus for them. But again, when we switched to the virtual mode, you know, a lot of students were left without. So that just highlights again, the digital divide. So what is the digital divide? The digital divide basically is students missing lessons, being unable to access material and struggling to complete assignments, all of which have significant implications for long-term learning and success. So the digital divide is basically the gap between the haves and the have nots. And as um, a Hispanic serving institution, we know that a lot of the students who were struggling were those in the, socio, the low socioeconomic areas, um, which tend to be more of the Hispanic students. So what as Cal State Fullerton, the IT department said, we need to find a way to get to digital equity. So that's how CETA came about. So digital with digital equity, we want to make sure that every student has equal access to technology, but not just technology. It's not just about handing them a device. You need to be able to train them and say, hey, we gave you a device, but this is how you use it. So again, CETA came about. So how did CETA get started and how do I, we have our logo? Um, so I don't know if you guys are familiar or you guys may have seen this before. Um, this is just an illustration of the difference between equality and equity. So equality, as you can see, they're trying to look over the, fee to the, over the fence to watch the baseball game and you give everybody the same box. 
yes, the taller man is able to see over the fence and the middle child as well, but the tiny one, he still can't see because you're giving everyone the same thing. Equity means you give them what they need, which is why we, we said the Center for Equitable Digital Access. We don't want to, like I said before, we don't want to just give everyone a device. You have to give them, if they need a device, great. Take your device, here you go, you know how to use it. But there's those that struggle with technology. We do have older generations on campus and some of them, you know, they're like, help me connect to the Wi-Fi. We do that. So the Center for Equitable Digital Access came about. So the logo you see, CETA, and if you just look at this um, logo here where you're seeing the three um, columns, that was created through this image. That was our inspiration. <clears throat> All right, so we did open CETA in January of 2022. And with the goal was obviously having a place where people can feel at home. I know home and family is very important in a Hispanic Hispanic household, um, even in heads, you know, they say, welcome to the heads familia. We had our introduction yesterday as a new member and they said, welcome to the heads familia. But family is just a very important concept, especially in the Hispanic community. So when we had our grand opening, opening we opened the event to all faculty, staff, students, and we also said, bring your family. So why the families? Because if you recall, 31.7% of our student population is a first-gen student. So we know that in order for first-gen students to succeed, they need to, we need to target their parents. It's their parents who are telling them, hey, did you do this? Did you do that? Like, I do that with my son. Um, you know, have you been checking your email? Did you sign up for this? Did you sign up for that? And a funny story that I'll share, um, so my, my son, my younger son, not the, not the one that comes to college, but the younger one, he's at the daycare here on campus. And so uh, when we first opened CETA, we were you know, introducing it at the new parent orientation, telling everyone about it. And the teacher's aide, you know, Hispanic, uh, she came up to me, she said, hey, I saw you present. She's like, I didn't even know about it. My son didn't even know. So I told him to go sign up for a device says, I wasn't going to buy him a laptop, but my dad had bought it for him. So now he's able to return it. And that to me was just great because, you know, you're taking resources to purchase a computer for your child or your grandchild because you want them to succeed. But at the same time, you're taking away from that money that would probably go towards something else. Um, so like I said, again, family is very important, especially in the Hispanic community. Um, this tiny picture here in the corner of me with my eyes closed, I wanted to include it because that is my mom. She even attended the open house because she was proud. You know, she said, hey, my daughter is the director of the center. I'm going to go and I'm going to support her. So that's that picture there. But you can see um, we did have a grand opening and people brought their children when they pick up their devices. They came and, and it, was, it, was a, it was a good feeling to see that, you know, our goal is coming to fruition. So CETA is located on the second floor of the library. Uh, we chose the library because that second floor already has a range of technology that's available to students. So in it, we have the Data Visualization Center. Um, that's the picture you see on the left side. Um, it's a room with um, 184 inch screen so that they can display data. And then we also have the Innovation Makerspace, which you see on the right side. And that one just, just has a technology where students can come in and use it for a class if they need it, or they can just come in to use it to kind of play around with it. Uh, we have Dell Cam canvases, we have Wacom Cintiqs, we have different displays, we have high-end PCs, and we even have virtual reality where most of the students just come in to kind of play around with it, but it's all available for them. And then we also have the interdisciplinary college collaboration space. Um, those are just the computer labs. The way we have it set up is it's color coded. So if you're on a yellow chair, all the yellow belongs to the College of the Arts. And those devices, if you hop on them, they have all the software that you need for that major. Okay. So CETA houses a couple of different programs. Like I said, we offer those uh, rooms that you can reserve. And uh, C Success is one of those programs. Uh, this one was started in spring of 2022. And what it does is uh, eligible students are able to request an iPad bundle. So the bundle includes the iPad, the keyboard, and a pencil, or a Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. And that device they get to keep until they graduate, or if they stop taking courses at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, we also have Titanware devices. So Titanware is the comprehensive ecosystem at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, this includes laptops, software, campus technologies, campus infrastructure, and IT support. 
So Titanware is more of a long-term basis. Um, so for long-term, it's uh, for the semester. Then we also have short-term, which uh, let's say they forget a device or they just need it because they're meeting with their group. They have 48 hours. Uh, we also offer internet and accessories such as uh, headsets and MiFi's and then uh, college-based devices such as high-end devices for specific engineering or computer science courses. So device checkouts, this is for the long term. Uh, like I said, we offer the eGPUs, headsets, iPads, MacBooks, MiFi's, monitors, PC laptops. Basically, if they need it and they cannot afford it, they just send a request to us. We don't verify um, that they have a financial aid. We just take their word for it. Um, and we do loan them to devices. And you can see um, from just in seven months alone how many devices were checked out. Um, in the whole, in, uh, since January of 2022 till now, uh, we've served 9,790 students. So 9,790 students have needed devices because they didn't have them. Um, and of those 9,790, 45% of them were Hispanic students. Uh, we also partnered with Excess to offer uh, internet connectivity. So Excess is a third party, but we do allow them to come and set up, you know, their table and and reach out to students. So what this is, is if they are on a qualifying government assistance program, such as a Pell Grant or CalFresh or Medicare, Medicaid, um, anyone who is on any federal government assistance program, they can get a tablet for $11. That's a one-time fee. You're only paying the taxes. And that gives them um, a tablet and it gives them hotspot capabilities. So again, we are partnering with people just looking to reach out so that we can help our population, our student population get connected because I know the move is shifting towards everything being online. I mean, everyone wants the online classes because they like being at home, you know, gas is so expensive. So why not stay at home? Why not take the classes online? So we want to make sure that they're able to succeed. So if we have to partner with outside parties and we do that, we just make sure, you know, that we inform our students and we refer them to it. And we have had about, um, we just started this about three months ago and we've had about 200 people sign up for it already. And then, of course, we have heads. Uh, we did uh, rejoin um, back in, I believe, November, December. Um, so we're proud to partner with them. And we really just want to show them you know, our students. Um, we did add it to our page. You can see it here on the right side. We lead them to the virtual plaza. And then from there, we show them instructions on how to log on to heads and how to take advantage of the test preps that they offer. We think that's great. We think it's going to capture a lot of um, our population because we do have, like I said, an, uh, we even have a nursing program. Uh, we have the undergrad and the doctorate, but I think that will help with the, the NICLEX, um, with the SAT, with the GREs for our business students. So we have been promoting um, just a couple of things to show you. Uh, you know, we, we put these out, um, the different colleges just so they know that it's out there. And then we are going to set up a portal wall. Basically the portal is how every student logs on to their, um, to their student uh, records. So we're gonna put up a portal wall with this information, just directing students, hey, we have this to offer you, take advantage of it. Uh, we, have, we offer so many programs, but the problem we find is getting the students to take advantage of it. So we're just using all our resources. We have digital signs on campus. We've been promoting everything on there. We, like I said, the portal wall, we send them emails through Salesforce. We send them um, just regular emails to our regular campus system. We have flyers when they come pick up the devices. Any way to reach them, we're trying because there's so many services we offer. We have, you know, seniors coming in like, oh, I didn't know you could check this out. Or when their devices break is when they find out. We're like, oh, I didn't know. I wish I would have known. I wouldn't have bought one because as we know, technology becomes obsolete within six, seven months. So even though you bought the new laptop, it's already old a year later. Um, but again, just kind of highlighting the services that we do offer our students. Right. And then uh, touching back to digital literacy again, it's not just about handing them a device and saying, here you go. Now you're equal. Now you're on the level playing field. Uh, digital literacy means, you know, having the ability to use the information and communication so that you can be on the level playing field. Um, we do offer digital literacy. Um, we want to make sure that all students have the necessary digital literacy to use the technology. Uh, we just hired a student who is going to be putting on uh, courses for Adobe. So, you know, we will have it in that room that I showed you, the DVC. Um, they'll be offering courses in there. We've offered courses on Grammarly, on LinkedIn. We had LinkedIn come in and kind of show how to better create your page, 
we had um, Adobe come in and do a training on how to create a banner for your LinkedIn. We had Apple come in and do a course on uh, accessibility, just all the offerings that Apple offers for you know students. Um, many different offerings that we give to students so that they learn how to use the tools that are there and that they're able to com compete with their counterparts. So where is CETA going? Uh, we have three specific objectives that are going to support our goals and those include campus engagement. We're going to engage with campus partners to work together and promote CETA services. And uh, like I said, we're also even outside of the campus partners, like for example, with Excess Telecom. Uh, we're gonna be agile and we're going to try new things and continuously improve through evaluation. Um, a lot of the courses that we offered, you know, we, we noticed that certain times were more popular than others. So we asked the students, hey, what's a good time for you? And a lot of them said the lunch hour. And we would think to us, we were like, no, you know, as an employee, you're like, no, I want my lunch hour. Why would anybody want to come to a training at lunch? But for the students, that's their convenient time. So, okay, we'll offer you classes during lunch. So we offered the, or the trainings during lunch. We offer the trainings, they're 30 minute trainings. So, you know, we accommodate, we'll take our, late, our lunch a little later so that you can attend this course because we know that this is gonna help you. And then inclusive, um, CETA respects and accounts for the unique needs of all students. We recently opened, uh, January, we opened the accessible technology room. Um, so that's a room for students, our disabled students to go in. We have, you know, um, the screen magnifiers, we have a, a adjustable desk. We're in the process of writing a grant um, to obtain more equipment such as a braille printer, uh, iPad Pros for them because I attended the Apple um, accessibility training myself and I realized that Apple products, they do offer a lot of uh, accessible tools. So we're just looking to kind of look for ways to include everyone and be inclusive and target uh, all students. Um, again, just being a Hispanic serving institution, a lot of the students that we are reaching are Hispanics and which is great because you know we wanna make every fair for everyone and have them succeed and uh, have them move forward and have a good career out in the future. So um, CETA, you know, we're the first of its kind in the system. Uh, we wanna promote CETA to other colleges in hopes of them opening similar programs. We recently hosted uh, all the CIOs, so all the, um, from the 23 campuses here at Cal State Fullerton. And, you know, when we were discussing CETA because the meeting was held right next to CETA offices, we discussed access and they were all interested because connectivity is a large, large, Pro, uh, problem on the campuses. So, you know, just putting it, just getting out there and promoting and just letting people know what we do and hoping that they replicate it um, is, is our goal. We want to be, we want to be, we want to have a CETA in every college so that every student has access to the tools that they need. All right. And uh, that was my presentation. I know I'm early, but I don't know if you have any, if anyone has any questions for me. I will be happy to answer them. I do see a hand raised. Making the question, could uh, say your name and the institution from your from where you are. Yeah, I got a question. My name is Carlos Crespo from COVID. Uh, in terms of digital. Uh, literacy, could you explain a little bit more in terms of the challenges that you have encountered in while teaching or trying to gain those uh, uh, competencies to your uh, your population? For the digital literacy, you said. Yeah. Okay. So for the digital literacy, um, a lot of the pro, a lot. Well, they're not problems. So again. Problem number one was just making a time for the students to be able to attend the digital literacy. A lot of the program problems that we find is, um, so a lot of the programs here, a lot of the courses, they do require use of Adobe uh, tools. A lot of them don't know how to use it, if, especially if you're like a computer science major and your professor is telling you to use Adobe, you tend to not have experience with that. 
Um, so what we did is we created the Adobe Digital Literacy Program. So a couple of our IT staff, they came, they go and they present to certain classes and they teach them how to use, at the time it was Adobe Rush, now I believe it's Adobe Express. Uh, so they go in and they teach them how to use it and they make it part of the curriculum. So now we are working with faculty to kind of make it part of the curriculum in departments outside of um, outside of, you know, the traditional places where you would expect to use Adobe, like in uh, graphic design and art. So we're taking it outside of outside of those areas and we're promoting it to all the colleges, even, you know, nursing where they may never use Adobe, but we want them to have that digital literacy. So by working with the faculty and incorporating it as part of the curriculum, we think that that's going to increase, you know, their their knowledge tenfold because they will know, even if it's minor, they will know the basics of Adobe, and if they ever need to use it, then they'll have that tool in their in their in their pocket. And I see Jasenia has her hand raised. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'm I'm joining in virtually. And um, what a fantastic program. I, I, I'm, I'm a representative of, a, of an administrator from the East Coast. Uh -huh. And I wanted to find out what funding you pursued to get the devices and what partnerships were required to create the center. So the, the funding that we used uh, was the CARES funding. Uh, so that was the money that came from COVID that the government gave to the uh, educational institutions. Um, we are currently uh, writing a grant for the uh, Mackenzie Scott Jewett Foundation, um, Mackenzie, uh, Amazon, and all of that. Um, so we're writing a grant. They offer up to 150000 um, and then as far as partnerships, um, in the beginning, it was partnering really honestly with the library. Um, okay and kind of working out the space and logistics of it. And then the chancellor's office, um, they were actually the ones who created the C success program and pushed it out to the campuses that were willing to participate. So of course we hopped on it. Um, I believe we were phase two of that program. So we partnered with the chancellor's office as well. And they did provide um, a partial funding for the iPads and the surfaces. Um, but a lot of it was CARES funding and that's why you know, we're coming to the end of there's no more CARES funds. So we're trying to get creative and hence the grant writing. Um, and then we are looking for other grant options so that we can uh, get more funding for our devices. Uh, Excess, that was a partnership that actually uh, the, pre the president here on campus, he met with a representative from Genesis Bank. And they, I guess Genesis Bank has a partnership with Access for the affordable connectivity program. So he put it, uh, the president put it on Amir's radar and we met with them and they discussed the program. You know, we asked them the questions that we needed to like, to make sure that it was a benefit for our students. Um, and then um, once we kind of went over everything, we did a partner with Access to create marketing materials and to promote that as well. Um, they have been on campus about eight times and again, um, when Amir mentioned it to the CIOs uh, or earlier this this year, uh, they were all super excited about it. And you know, Amir's happy to promote it, and he got everyone in contact. We have a meeting next week already with all the CSUs to meet with Excess and to see who wants to take advantage of them and who's going to join with them. And um, again, the connectivity program is a big, big, big portion because we have my five devices that we check out. Um, we only have 200 that we can check out and we're already down to the last three and the semester just started two weeks ago. So we know we're going to get more. So just being able to, instead of telling them, you know, I'm sorry, you're on a wait list because that's our process when we run out of devices. Um, we're able to say, we don't have any, but have you looked into this program? And a lot of them are like, oh, great. And then they end up, and when, if excess is here on campus, they end up taking that device then and there. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> that very much answers my question. And we are more um, than happy to meet with you or Amir would grad gladly meet if you ever wanted to, you know, touch base and discuss how maybe to implement it in your, I your area. I most certainly would love to connect. Here on the East Coast, we're in need of some kind of a mechanism, if you will, to manage the, the heads connectivity of services, uh -huh. but also making sure that uh, our students are able to access information uh, accordingly, now we have computer labs, but definitely not the type of yeah. devices you're speaking on. And so the other question I had was the um, 
the connectivity service that you offer mm -hmm. through, is that through the state? Is that something that you organized through the center? How, how did you do that with the, um, the broadband connectivity? The excess portion? Yes, yes, yes. So excess is the ones who administer. They receive federal funding from the government. Um, they, they have a, so I, my, like I said, um, my son comes here, he gets a Pell Grant. And I said, let me try it out. So what you, so this is before they were on campus. So I did it online because you can also apply online. So you apply, you enter your information, you state how you qualify. And I put, he has a Pell Grant. Um, they have a clearinghouse on the back end that verified it. And then like five, six days later, I had the tablet in the mail. Um, when they are coming here, here on campus, they set up their table. Uh, again, they come in and they say, how do you qualify? And they'll say, you know, I have Cal Op, or our, our program here is Cal Optima, which is Medicare, uh, Medi-Cal, I'm sorry. Um, so they said, I have Cal Optima. So they have a clearing house. They enter it on their device. And if it's, and if it comes out, then they take the device then and there. Um, if it doesn't, they say, hey, can you, do you have proof? And they show their card or they'll go to financial aid. If they're a Pell Grant recipient, they'll go get a, um, their offer letter. And then they come back, they put it, it takes about 20 minutes. They come, they get their device, they leave with it and it's automatic hotspot and it's good for a year. You do have to recertify after a year. But once you recertify, then you're good for another year. So that is all their funding. Like, honestly, minimal for us. The only thing they honestly required of us was marketing them and allowing them a space to set up. So that's why I think a lot of the colleges are like, hey, we can do this. We can market it and we can get it out to our students. Because, again, a lot of them can't be in the computer labs. You know, even though we're open 24-7 during um, like finals, they can't be here. A lot of them have families. A lot of them, you know, have work. Absolutely. So we, I mean, honestly, you have to, so when you request a device, you have to put a reason and some of the reasonings you're like, wow, you know, it's like I live with eight people and I share one computer or I use my mom's work computers or sometimes she needs it. Or some even say, you know, I'm living in my car and I need connectivity. Like they'll be in the parking trying to get Wi-Fi. I mean, it's just, it's, there's so much students are in so need and we're in Orange County, which, you know, we have the, what they call it the orange bubble where we don't mm -hmm. see it, but it's there. Mm -hmm. It's there. So like, if you, that's why we don't say like, oh, you know, based on financial need, if you're telling us you need it, we'll give it to you as long as we have the devices. And luckily the only thing we ever run out of our MacBooks, but we have so many Dells and we're like, Hey, we don't have any more MacBooks, but can you use a Dell? So <laughs> yeah. So excess, honestly, the only thing they required of us was, um, marketing and I believe and I believe it's nationwide because uh we when we were met with them last week she uh the the representative was based out of I believe she was in Kansas or Indiana somewhere where she was saying she was cold <laughs> <laughs> I was like not California <laughs> I I took down your email address. yes thank you so much I will most certainly be reaching right. out to you yes thank looking you. forward to it and my uh, um I did put my email in the chat in case anyone else wants to reach out Any other questions? Questions? Okay. Thank you for your questions and participation. Okay, there is an email. Thank you for your question and participation in this special uh, presentation. In person participant, please use the QR code on your name badge to access the link and evaluate this session before leaving. Please select the correct track and time. Some participants, please access the evaluation link in the chat so you can complete the evaluation as well. Thank you for your presentation and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully Thank next you. year I get to be in person. <laughs> Bye. Have a good one, everyone.